This is probably one of my most exciting days. I am a huge fan of Dr. Mercola. I have followed him for so long. I love everything he does. And so welcome, Dr. Mercola. Well, thanks for having me, Chantel. I appreciate the opportunity to be here. Well, everyone already knows so much about you, For but for those people who have been living under a rock, tell them a little bit about yourself. Well, I'm trained as a board-certified family physician, uh, started, practice, started, got my degree in 82, and saw patients for over 20 years, uh, and then it, but I've also been a strong and passionate about technology, so I started my website two years before Google started theirs. And been around a while, around the block, and uh, for the last 15 years, we've been the most visited natural health site on the uh, in the world, and which has you know really reached hundreds of millions of people. Uh, we were reaching uh, a million people a day, a million views rather, and uh, that was before prior to Google censoring us in hundreds of other natural health sites in June. So far, that reaches have gone down to about 400,000. So it's it's really great to be he here with you to have the opportunity to reach people who may not because of the Google censorship. Great. So let's jump right in. So some people call it time-restricted eating. Some people call it intermittent fasting. I know you prefer time-restricted eating. Mm -hmm. Talk a little bit about how long have you been personally doing it and what type of eating window do you prefer? Well... Let me preface things. First First of all, I, I think time restricted is the most technically correct term because intermittent fasting could refer to multiple day fasting and we and it would be correct where that's not the case for time restricted eating or TRE for short. So I have uh, been doing it maybe three or four years, some version of it, some variant. But let me first embrace the concept because um, I've been studying natural medicine for decades and have really been had the opportunity to learn a lot about this field and understand what the priorities are. And probably with respect to nutrition, one of the most basics is to just drink pure water. Avoid drinking soda, diet soda, and fruit juice is like number one thing you can recommend to those who aren't as wise as you were watching. That's because you've known that for years or decades, but maybe your friends or family don't. Although there's an increasing percentage of population who, who fully appreciate the cop now, but well, they, they may choose not to follow. But following close behind that private recommendation for the power of nutritional interventions would be time restricted eating. It is profound one one of the simplest, most effective strategies you can use to regain your health for so many large reasons. But even if you chose to eat garbage foods, which we obviously don't recommend. But if you did, you'd still get healthier. For, it's just powerful. And it, and it does it so for a, a large number of reasons, but it essentially pushes many of your metabolic pathways in the right direction. And uh, largely, they'll probably one of the biggest benefits is activating a process called autophagy. And autophagy is from two Greek words, auto meaning self and phagos meaning eating. So essentially what it does is it takes your cellular parts, not the cells, that's a different process called apoptosis, but your cellular parts and recycles them. Uh, and uh, so if in the case of proteins, it could recycle the amino acids. In the case of damaged membranes, it can burn the fatty acids for energy and, and essentially gets rid of the trash. And you can imagine what New York City would look like if the garbage man went on strike for a month. So similarly, it happens internally to you if you're not activating this valuable process. And Sachin Panda, who I suspect you know who he is, and maybe yeah. you're, are you interviewing him for the summit? Uh, I think I don't think I am, but I'm going to reach out to him. I need to. Yeah, he's the he's a top guy with respect to the researchers, and he's at the, I think he's at the Salk Institute in California, and he's done a lot of good studies on this. And one of the ones I'm intrigued with is this. Is surveyed and found uh, when he, uh, it, uh, I guess, uh, collected data from individuals, found that more than 90% of the people are eating more than 12 hours a day. And some people, nine out of 10. So if you were eating more than 12 hours a day, there is no way you are activating autophagy. It isn't just not going to work. So, you know, then, then that was 90, that was, 90% are eating more than 12, and probably more than half are eating about 16 hours a day. So they're eating 
from the time they get up to the time they go to bed. And the only time they're not eating is when they're sleeping, which is a prescription for metabolic disaster. And I didn't understand this until about four or five years ago. It's not like I grew up, my parents didn't know it. And certainly most people don't realize this. And we just thought that you should eat. It makes a lot of sense. Intuitively, you would think, yeah, but, you know, you need calories, so you should eat all day long. But the, that's not how, biologically how it works, you know. So it, it, once you understand that, it, and and you when witness and observe the impact of the intervention yourself, you can you can you can confirm it personally. But it's not intuitive to the restrict your because it's you know for if you aren't eating a time restricted eating or done window, you're going to not have metabolic flexibility, which is a simple term that was I think really established by or. Uh, promulgated by a Mark Sisson who's a good friend of mine and uh, he actually taught me this concept that you, it, metabolic flexibility is when you have the ability to seamlessly transition between burning fats and carbohydrates as a fuel most people can't do that I would say 85% of the people in the United States are unable to do that and they, they can really only burn carbohydrates so when you're metabolically inflexible to transition to time restricted eating becomes a challenge, a, a real challenge, because um, you're going to not have access to the f alternative fuel source. And as a result, when your glycogen levels become depleted, you'll have many symptoms of fatigue, tiredness, uh, lack of energy, uh, which are, I guess, all synonyms for the same thing, but uh, irritability. You know, it's just a, a laundry list of symptoms. Which fortunately, if you're persistent and kick, stick with it, tend to resolve relatively quickly within a, certainly less than a month in most people, unless you're seriously metabolically deranged, but probably a few weeks for most for most individuals. And then, then you transition, then you're then you become free. You have freedom back, and you don't have to be a slave to seeking fucking food without to avoid becoming hypoglycemic, hypoglycemic type symptoms. So uh, it, it's just magnificently important. So then th th that was a long-winded answer, but your second part of that, and I still remember it because my brain works pretty well. Because <laughs> I'm doing a lot of things to optimize brain health, but the, the, the was the, the the window. So obviously less than 12 hours it should be. And you're probably not going to get a lot of benefits until you get down to at least eight hours. I think that should be your goal. And you don't do it overnight. If you're metabolically inflexible, you don't immediately jump to eight hours. You do it slowly over time. You know, give your body time to adjust. But then you, once you hit eight, you go to six. And my personal favorite is four. Now, if you are metabolically flexible and you are at an ideal body weight, then I don't believe it's necessary or maybe even important, not even important, but maybe even counterproductive to do longer types of fasts. So a two, three, five day, seven day fast, even longer than that. Uh, if you're metabolically inflexible and you've got a large number of pounds to use, then I would strongly encourage you because I think it's a powerful intervention. And I wrote a book called Keto Fast, which goes into a, an interesting way that can avoid some of the side effects of uh, just doing a regular water fast. Because if you're metabolically unhealthy, you're going to liberate many uh, fat-soluble toxins that are stored in your fat when you're burning it as fuel, and then that can cause some complications. So you have to be careful there. So that was the last book I wrote. My next book comes out in February, which is uh, about EMFs. It's called emf -t. And oh, all, all, Yeah, it's great. It's really, in fact, uh, if people want a preview of it, it's on my, uh, you can go to my emf.mercola.com book does come out in February, but we have the most important chapter, which is how to remediate against this because, you know, that's, so time-restricted eating, unbelievable. I couldn't advocate it more strongly as one of the most active, uh, 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 sorry, incredibly important concepts or, or principles to integrate into your lifestyle to gain health. But avoiding EMFs, EMFs is really up there too. And it's a really a new problem because it didn't exist you know, a few decades ago, for the most part, the exposures we have now to wireless uh, cell phones and routers. So it's a new threat to the human species, but you're going to be much better able to substantiate, not to, to repair the damage from this if you're intermittently fasting, because 
you're going to activate all these powerful pathways. As I said, octophagy is one, but you also, they're one of the most important biomolecules in your body is something called NAD+. And have you heard of that, Chantel? No. Okay. NAD+, plus is short for uh, nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide. And it's been, a, it was discovered like 115 years ago in uh, 1904. And if you've ever taken bio, anyone that's taken biochemistry has, has heard of this because it's an integral part of the Treb's, uh, Krebs citrus, citric acid cycle or, or oxidative phosphorylation in the mitochondria. And it's, and you couldn't do it without NAD. But about 10, what, almost 20 years ago now, uh, David Sinclair, who's a professor of genetics at Harvard, studied this and its impact on these longevity proteins called sirtuins. And it turns out this NAD is really important for these. And when you don't have a lot of NAD, it doesn't, they don't work well. As a result, you're, you just don't live as long. Uh, but they also play another important role in um, the DNA repair enzyme process. Uh, it, it, uh, they serve as fuel for the primary enzyme that, that, that uh, catalyzes that process. So when you're exposed to EMFs, it's an issue. So one of the ways that you can improve your longevity is like limit your exposure to EMFs, but also time-restricted eating. Because the reason I went on the tangent with NAD, uh, when you do time-restricted eating you and exercise is another simple thing that you can do. Because a lot of people try to increase their NAD levels by taking these expensive precursors like nicotinamide riboside or NMN, a nicotinamide mononucleotide. And they seem to work, but there's a, you know, might cost you $100 a month to take those. Whereas if you were doing time restricted eating, you could it, increase this enzyme that actually causes your body to recycle it. It's called NAMPT, and you know you get it for free. So you increase the levels by thirty percent. So it, it, it's a powerful intervention to improve longevity. And I, I, I view David Sinclair as probably one of the leading guys in the world for helping us understand how to maximize longevity. And I think ultimately he'll be responsible for. Uh, providing us with some cellular reprogramming tools that go beyond what we can do with traditional biology. But he, he the, the reason I mentioned that he widely embraces intermittent fasting too, and he, he views it as one of the most powerful tools, and he, he clearly practices it himself. So, so it may be difficult to do, especially socially, you know, because uh, if you're going to eat for four hours, it doesn't leave you a lot of window. So you're going to have to skip some meals. Now, the time, I think it's important too to maximize the time that you stop eating to increase the most time you can prior to sleep. Because if you just, if you say you went to bed at nine and you ate from three to seven or four to eight, it's not a good idea because you're going to be digesting your food and it's, you know, it's a metabolically active process. You're going to be generating, you're going to have access to calories that you wouldn't have typically and it's just not a good strategy to stay healthy. So you, the, the end result of that, you want to have at least three, maybe even four. I do six hours, seven hours before I go to bed. I haven't eaten. So you're, go, you're essentially, when you are sleeping, you are truly fasting because it takes that long to digest the food to get out of your system. And, and then when you're in that state, you can maximally benefit from the restorative and regenerative powers that sleep has, which is you know, massively important uh, strategy to stay healthy too. And many people don't fully appreciate the value of sleeping and they says, well, I can do more and sleep less and I'll be much better off. But yeah, you're going to like cut off years off your lifespan if you do that. So I mean, it's really important, you know, and, and your ability to, to be um, sharp and having your brain function the way it needs to, the, the, the way that it does when you're on time-restricted eating. Let's just take a minute and let's talk about my latest discovery. Listen, this is the hottest super nutrient packed product that's going to boost your brain and your overall well being. First of all, as soon as I tried this product, I became a fan of it and was blown away by the immediate result. I felt focused, my mind was clear, it just doubled my mental performance. So, this product has the superpowers of mushroom extracts and collagen. So it has four of the best health boosting mushrooms. It's got lion's mane, chaga, cordyceps, and reishi, collagen, and Peruvian cacao. 
So when you combine all of these, the four mushrooms and the collagen, it is going to energize your brain and your body. It's called Kala Genius. So check it out, newtopia.com slash wasteawaygenius and use the code wasteaway10 during checkout. Yeah. Well, let's talk about time-restricted eating for weight loss specifically. And, you know, on my podcast, I have all these people who ask questions all the time. And a lot of the women say that for weight loss, the eight-hour window of eating isn't short enough for them to lose weight. But the men, yeah. And the, but the men, she's saying, like we get people and they're like, my husband can do eight hours and he's losing all kinds of weight. I'm doing eight hours and, I, and I'm not. Can you talk about that for just a minute? I know well, for me, I can't do eight hours. I'm like you, four hours is-, is Well, I do four hours because I'm obsessive compulsive. You know, I like to <laughs> optimize things. So let me t- tell you another strategy where will work. And it will be after I explain why I think that's the difference. I don't know that anyone knows for sure, but my guess is this related to the muscle mass that men have, which is significant more than, more than women. Typically, it's hormonal, it's biological. I mean, it's not in every case, but in most cases, that's the scenario. So when you have more muscle mass, you're able to really store more glucose. And it's just a much, it's a, it's a very um, active endocrine organ and it, it People don't realize this half of the tissue in your body is muscle. Half, 40 to 60%. It's crazy. So it becomes particularly problematic as people age because they tend to develop muscle loss, which is called sarcopenia. And when you have the muscle loss, it becomes really progressively more difficult to keep control of your weight because it's a powerful endocrine organ. And after you eat, the largest sink for glucose is your muscles. That's where it goes. It goes in your muscles. If you don't have a lot of muscles, it's, it's going to, stay in your blood and as a result it will contribute to insulin resistance and and obesity because we know insulin resistance is a, is a, a central element of uh, weight control and you really want, and that's you know restricting your eating window to four hours or at least eight eight hours and probably four to six is going to radically improve your body's ability your, your insulin receptor sensitivity to, to uh that and as a result, you'll be able to most likely control control that. Now, one of the other advantages, if you're only eating for four hours, that means twenty hours you're not, or say it's six hours, that means eighteen hours you're not eating. It's a still a darn long time of not eating. So, a little hack that you can use, which is incredibly profoundly powerful, to act that actually increases maybe doubles the value of the autophagy is on the tail end of your non-eating window or typically right before you're going to break your fast in the day, whether whatever time that is, you would do your exercise and you would do pretty hard exercise. My favorite exercise, I've been exercising for over five decades. I started in 1968, my exercise. So I'm really passionate about exercise. I've been doing it my entire life, essentially. But I've, I've learned a new version of exercise just this year. It's called blood flow restriction training or BFR for short. Have you heard of that before? Yes, I have. From oh. you. Oh, okay. There you go. Well, we're doing, we're going to, if for those who haven't, we have a, uh, a special URL. It's called BFR, blood flow restriction, just BFR.mer.com. And you can go there and you can download a PDF that I've created and lots of information and videos on how to do this. But there is nothing more effective in my mind for it improving your muscular health and your and your physiological health in this blood flow restriction training. So if you do that on the tail end of your intermittent or your time restricted eating, you can radically increase the benefits, the autophagy. You can inhibit mTOR more. You can activate AMPK. You can activate IGF one, and you get all these benefits. And you can increase your muscle mass and your muscle strength which becomes progressively important the older you are. This is, this is important in my view for most women and for pretty much anyone over 60. The BFR is essentially a process where you put bands on your upper limbs or lower limbs, one or the other. And you typically, there's depends on which type you do. There's a cycling version that you can do with the Katsu equipment, which is a version out of Japan. That just cycles on and off, and you can just walk, or you can type. You can you essentially be do passive exercise, or there's a type where you just re- have a restriction and tension, 
and then you can do light weights. By light, I mean uh, for conventional, what's called heavy resistance or high load resistance training, it's like 70 to 85% of your one rep max. With blood flow restriction, it's like 20%. So, I mean, literally like one fifth of the weight that you would, that you could lift at most. So, but you just do a lot of reps and the restriction in the blood with your blood flow causes these hormones, to, these, these biological molecules to accumulate, which, which triggers a wide variety of hormonal shifts and changes that causes your muscles to grow pretty dramatically. Usually within a week or two, it's pretty obvious. And I know some women can get concerned with that, and that's a big part of your audience, but it's not so much muscle growth, that's kind of a guy thing, but it's muscle tone. You know, you just become more toned and more importantly, metabolically healthy so that you'll have the tissue that you require to actually burn fat. Because it's really most of the fat burning occurs in your muscles. And if you don't have muscle tissue, how are you going to do it? So, and it's a, it's, it's like putting money in the bank. Uh, and the analogy here is that if you ever get sick or have to go to the hospital, there's a high likelihood you're not going to come out alive. And there's a much higher likelihood you're not going to come out alive if you don't have a lot of muscle mass, because that is your reserve. And that's what your body relies on to get you through dangers and, and get, get through the valley. And if you don't have a lot to get through, you're not, you're not going to make it. So, it, you know, it's just like you buy fire insurance for your home and car insurance for your auto and you wear your safety belt, safety, safety belt, but you want to take some proactive action. That's why you really want to pay attention to exercise. And, you know, stretching and yoga is great and you certainly should do that too, but that's typically not going to build muscle mass. So you need to pay attention. Usually it's resistance training uh, of some sort. You could, it doesn't have to be weights. You could use resistance bands or you can use body weight too. So as long, and if you've got these, these blood flow restriction bands or, uh, then they'll, they'll really help improve that. So that's, I think the big thing is that, you know, the exercise is important and, and it, you know, the exercise, the, so the three things, the exercise, blood flow restriction would be my favorite, time restricted eating and EMF avoidance. You get those three things. Now there's a, there's literally probably at a minimum three dozen other things that I can mention that would help. But if you've got those things going on, you're, it's like the Pareto. You're doing thing. good. <laughs> yeah. Well, you're not just doing good. You're capturing like almost 80% of what you need to do. And it's almost if you, I mean, yes, there's no, nothing's an absolute, but the likelihood that your health is going to improve and not just improve, but improve dramatically is really, really high. So it's, it will be shocking to most people if they integrate these into their lifestyle because these pernicious influences on their process, progress towards disease are, are, are mitigated and you're able to allow your body's natural healing mechanisms to be activated and, and essentially if you, you become healthy and what a lot of people don't realize is that if you're healthy, you can't have disease. You know, yeah. it's like shining a light in the dark. You can't have both. It's one or the other. So either you're healthy or sick. So the key is to get healthy and then your body takes care of the rest. It's not like, and it doesn't matter what label someone's given you. Almost any disease is going to respond to these interventions. Now, there's dozens of other things you can do. It depends on your specific thing. Like if you have an autoimmune disease, and my particular passion now is the carnivore diet because it eliminates what we believe is some of the major triggers for autoimmune disease. So, I mean, if I was treating a patient today with autoimmune disease, I'd strongly encourage them to go carnivore and do a lot of these other things. Not carnivore. You know, carnivore could be very dangerous if you're eating 18 hours a day but if you're only eating four to six hours then it becomes healthy so awesome you, yeah well can you talk a little bit about how fasting let's say you're doing an extended fast and it affects your electrolytes and what is the best source of electrolytes during a fast like is it just salt is there yeah salt different? is probably all you need uh yeah i've read uh there's a i wrote a book uh, super fuel, which is with James D. Nicolatonio, who wrote the book Salt Fix. It goes into that in great detail because there's a lot of fear around salt, but no, salt salt would be the best. And if you don't, you're going to get what many people call the keto flu, which is really the, probably a sodium deficiency. And now you you ideally you do all the trace minerals, especially maybe not even trace minerals like magnesium. Uh, and th there are some trace mineral supplements, but just simple 
healthy salts like Celtic sea salt or Redmond or Himalayan, you know, these not just salt that you buy out of the store, the regular processed salt. So that would be, and you don't need a lot, but you know, definitely I would do it. And you know, when you're, you could put it, it doesn't taste too good when you put it in water. So when I, I don't fast anymore, I've done probably four, maybe five, five day fast. And I don't regret doing it just to go through the experience. It's really easy to do after the second day. Uh, but I, I am just focused on optimizing my lean muscle mass and fast. And I know you can do it. And if you're younger, it's not a problem, but I just, I, when I'm doing this time restricted eating and I'm, and I'm integrating the high intensity exercises, I think I'm getting all the autophagy I need. But when, if you were fasting, what you do is pour the salt on your hand and just lick it. And it tastes real good. And some people, I, for me, it reminds me of pop, popcorn. It almost tastes so good. Especially if you're not eating anything, it's like a real treat. So, uh, cause it's going to be hard to put in water to drink. It just does not, salt water does not taste good, uh, for most people. So let's talk about someone who's new to fasting and they say, look, like I need a few things to kind of get me through. Let's say they are wanting to kind of extend their fast a little bit longer. Do you have any opinion of like different tricks, like maybe coffee with MCT oil or coffee with ghee or anything like, is it okay for them to start with a little coffee with creamer just to kind of get them through? And what's your opinion about that? Well, when you're transitioning with your diet, you know, essentially lowering your carbohydrates, that's the key. You want to transition to a higher percentage of fats and lower percentage of, of carbohydrates. So in that transition phase, you may want to use things like coconut oil or even MCTs or caprylic acid because they uh, metabolize much quicker and convert to energy so that when you're Oh, it went dark there. Yeah, it did. I got oh. back up. Okay, good. So um, that's, a, that's a strategy. But if you're fasting, you don't really want to have anything to eat because otherwise you're not fasting. Any calories is not. But in, in the transition period towards the fast, you can do that because once you're metabolically flexible, it's good. And just to know, probably the most important thing is the psychological tool that if, after, if you can get through the first 48 hours, you're going to be golden because the, the, the hunger really does disappear. I mean, it's not an issue. It's just the first 48 hours. And, and if you're, and if you've done time restricted eating, you're so used to it. It's not an issue. You don't, there's not, it's not like you're giving something up. It, the, there are no cravings. There's no cravings. So it's not difficult to do. It's just like, Oh, I can't wait till my next, this is not there. No, the, the, those, those, uh, feelings or urges are gone. So, uh, but it does take, you need to become metabolically flexible to do that. And that's why you transition towards that higher, high quality fat. And it can't be any fat because there's a lot of bad fat out there. The processed fats are like the worst foods you can eat. They're far worse than sugar because they stick around a lot longer. They get integrated into your cell membranes where sugar you typically burn. I mean, sometimes it could, if you have too much, it's going to be uh, metabolized and converted to fat, but at least it's brand new fat that you made from scratch, as opposed to unhealthy fat that you take and integrate into your cell structure. So that's not a good idea. And it really can ruin your health for months at a time until you're able to remove those cells from your body. So be really careful about your fat source. It has to be high quality fat. And while you're doing that, you want to pay attention to the three to six ratio, you know, making sure you get enough good high quality omega threes. Uh, fish oil would be one or fish. Uh, if you're doing fish oil supplements, I like krill because it's a, a phosphate. It's got uh, it's attached to phosphate bonds. Phospholipids are so they're more easily absorbed. But if you're going to use fish oil, and there's nothing raw with fish oil. You just want to make sure you you have the triglyceride form and not the ethyl ester form because it's not as good and maybe problematic. Uh, but you need those, and you want to minimize your omega six. So if you, like you could theoretically do keto high fat diet with nuts. Really, uh, especially things like almond, not, not almonds, we're high in oxalates, but pecans, uh, which are low in protein, low in carbs and high in fat. But the fat they have is omega-6. So your six to three ratio just goes through the roof. And, you know, that can be problematic too. So, you know, the saturated fats usually, it's hard to go wrong with animals, especially if they're not CAFO, confined animal feeding operations and organic. You know, you're going to get, pretty healthy foods. It's some of the most nutrient dense foods you can get on the planet as an animal food. And they're animal organ, organ meat too. You need nose to tail. So you're getting the full thing in the collagen 
which is really important for connective tissue. So awesome. Well, we've seen a lot of people with even type two diabetes improve their diabetes with fasting. Can you explain the science behind that a little bit? Well, it doesn't. Imp- if you if it's done correctly, I, I would say that it doesn't improve diabetes. It cures diabetes. T mm-hmm. type two. But interestingly, the carnivore diet, if, if you're if you're type one, which is insulin complete insulin deficiency, and an autoimmune disease, usually the the, the beta cells in the pancreas, the islet cells, uh, if you get it early and you stop and you stop all the plants, you, you could actually reverse type one diabetes. If you have if you had type one diabetes for ten years, you're forty years old, and you've had it since a child, it's not going. That's not going to happen. They're gone. But if you catch it right at the beginning, you can. So how does type 2 diabetes reverse by this process? It addresses the fundamental issue, the, what's wrong, which is insulin resistance and the ability to seamlessly switch between burning fat and sugar for fuel. So once you're able to do that, your body kicks in and the, and the you know, you're, you're basically the diabetes is gone, just disappears. And Jason Fung has done a lot of good work with that. He's, he's done a lot. He just basically restricts people's eating windows and it does pe- put people on fast. And he's up in Canada, uh, which is socialized medicine. So, and he's a nephrologist um, and uh, has limited resources. You know, he doesn't have a lot of time to spend with patients like most doctors. He doesn't have a big team. So he just tells them something simple to do. And he's just the simplest thing he can do that they can follow. He doesn't have time to go over to, to like guide him and mentor them through the diet. So he says, stop eating and their diabetes. <laughs> And their diabetes just appears. So why isn't nephrologist telling people, you know, really focusing on di- two type two diabetes? Because like eighty five percent of the people he sees for kidney disease is from type two diabetes. It's the primary reason why people's kidneys go into failure is type two diabetes. And you probably don't know this. Most people watching this don't know this, but eighty five percent of the people in the United States, eighty five percent, either have diabetes or pre diabetes. That's eighty five percent. So it's a big deal. And it's a, it's an even bigger deal to know and realize and understand that time restricted eating can totally reverse that. Uh, it's just it's in my view nothing short of magical. I mean, my I have a a guy that works for me. He's been a veteran farmer, and when he first started, he was uh, close to three hundred pounds, two seventy, two eighty, type two diabetes, and a lot of health problems. But I put him on this program, and he's lost like eighty pounds. And he's got his life back. You know, it was just simple stuff that he didn't know. Now, he got another complication too because he had a lung disease because he was exposed to chemicals and they put on steroids, which just messed him up. So, yeah, but we, we've been able to restore his health with some simple strategies. And one of the most important was time restricted eating, you know, and really cutting back on the, those, those carbs, you know, so key. I'd like you to talk just for a second about your gut and your gut health and a little bit about tips for people. A lot of people on our my show have talked about how when they do do fasting, then they're struggling with constipation. Mm-hmm. So is there any tips for that to help people who are like, look, I've been fasting and then I'm struggling with constipation. Any tips there? Well, if you're fasting, you shouldn't have any bones <laughs> really after after like day three or so. There's because you're not putting anything in. So what's going to come out? So uh, the the, bowel, the need for a bowel mitzvah essentially is eliminated. But if you have problems with uh, challenges with, with constipation, usually the, the simplest and best solution is to increase your magnesium levels. Magnesium is a mineral that I would say 80% of the people are deficient in anyway. It also is a mineral that seems to provide some intrinsic protection against EMFs uh, by uh, helping your body limit the activation of these voltage calcium channels. So I would definitely take magnesium. I, I love, you could even go up to a gram a day. Uh, one of the other nice ways of magnesium, sort of an advanced strategy, would be uh, molecular hydrogen tablets, which uh, is a little gas that comes out when you put this, these pills in water. But they ha- each, each of these pills has like 80 milligrams of elemental magnesium, which is considerable. You only need like 400 milligrams a day. So a uh, good way to improve a uh, guard against oxidants which is probably the best antioxidants on the market because it's a selective antioxidant. It doesn't um, indiscriminately suppress beneficial free radicals, which you, your body needs. Like hydrogen peroxide forms a very, it, even though it's a free radical, it, it has a really important biological signaling molecule. And if you take some of these antioxidants like vitamin C, alpha acid, vitamin E, 
uh, they have benefits, but if they're taken in, in larger quantities than you need, you know, you're going to limit, you're going to suppress these these signaling molecules, and that can have some complications with your health. So, uh, molecular hydrogen just increases your body's own antioxidants when you need it. It, it. it just activates your body's intrinsic machinery. So, when it senses that you need, you have excess oxidative stress, then it signals your DNA to make these. Uh, antioxidants like uh, superoxide dismutase and glutathione and catalase and then you know then you know to the rescue you know when you need it but it's only given when you need it so it's kind of nice but magnesium and this is a long tangent but i think the magnesium would probably be the simple thing i'm not a big fan of increasing fiber for constipation that could be problematic and could, could contribute to things that may impair your gut microbiome like uh, SIBO small intestinal bacterial overgrowth so Magnesium, you just don't want to, it's got this in, built in safeguard. If you take too much, you're going to get loose stools. So you, it's kind of hard to overdose on magnesium. Awesome. Well, it's been such a pleasure having you on the show today. Tell listeners where they can learn more about you and your books. Well, as I mentioned, some of the links before, uh, it's mercola.com, M E R C O L A. But the two that, the two, my two recent books uh, are the, 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 uh, well, actually, I didn't write a book about BFR because I'm transitioning. Uh, I'm stopping writing books now. I've written probably close to 20 books, most of them bestsellers. But it's just, I, I'm in a different phase of life now. So rather than writing books, I'm going to be writing review papers. So really an area I'm top t- passionate about, I might write maybe two or three papers a year. Just finish one on BFR, a book over nutrition training. You can get all the insights from that work that I've just done the last six months at bfr.mercola.com. And it, you'll, it, you'll be very pleased with that. And it's, you know, it took me, took me like three months to write this PDF. It's, it's like 25, 30 pages and a lot of videos in there. Uh, and then uh, the emf.mercola.com is my new book that comes out in, in February. But then I'm, my paper that I'm working on now is on carnosine, which is uh, an incredible biomolecule. It's a, actually, it's a, two amino acids put together that, can have radical improvement for things like diabetes uh, and uh, heart health and brain health and it's just and longevity. It's just an amazing molecule. So I'm, I'm kind of fascinated beyond with that and writing write my next review paper on. So, but anyway, that's the go. And it, you know, we have a daily newsletter at Mercola.com that we sift through all the hundreds of hundreds of studies and reports that come out every week, and then we just pick seven. You know, that should, that, and we go into great detail, maybe somewhere about 10 pages and, you know, kind of break it down for you and give you the links to go to further information if you want. So you, you can keep abreast real easily. And we've been doing it for 20 years. And, you know, now that Google has censored natural health, not just us, but, you know, many other websites, uh, you're not going to find answers to your questions on the, on the search engines if you're using Google. So uh, you can go to my, I, my website because we've been around for 22 years and you, 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 know, you can use that as a start. I'm working on an alternative search engine that will include hundreds of other sites that have been censored. Uh, but I'm in the process of putting it together and hope that we'll have it soon. But right now it's not available. So, uh, and you have your own amazing line of different dietary supplements and different yeah. uh, vitamins. What are, do you have a um, magnesium on your site that's a really good one that you recommend? Yeah, we have made, we actually are coming up with a new one that's really good. It's called Canna Calm. Uh, the Canna comes from cannabis, so it's got CBD in there. And it has a, a combination of different magnesiums like magnesium 3 and 8, citrate, uh, malate, which, which is my favorite. And then, of course, I mentioned the, the molecular hydrogen, which has, which has 80 milligrams, it has other benefits. It's probably one of the more important supplements I take is molecular hydrogen. Uh, we have the high dose one, and so you drop it in water in like a minute or a half or two, then you kind of got to look at it because this tablet has to completely dissolve. And you put it in like 12 ounces of water, so not just a little small amount. And then you drink it all at once because it's the, this hydrogen comes up, these and create this tablet creates a nano bubble, which well, has the physics to allow higher concentrations of hydrogen to go into the water because normally it only goes like one to two milligrams per liter, but it'll take it up to almost 10 milligrams per liter with these nano bubbles. So it's a little bit of a challenge to, to do it. But but then as I said, for each tablet, you're getting 81 milligrams of, mag- of magnesium. So, And that will help you with 
nukes yeah, and fouls as I, well. Yeah, I think even by the time the summit comes out, I think we'll have that canicom up. Uh, you know, CBD is, you know, it's not psychoactive. It's it's basically stimulates your own endocannabinoids, which you know is what you do when you exercise properly too. But it's a, an important receptor to stimulate to get some some mental health benefits. Well, awesome. Well, on behalf of all of our guests, I want to thank you once again. And just what a tremendous work you are doing in helping saving so many lives and taking all of our health to the next level. So thank you so much for all the work you do. We really appreciate it. Thank you. Um, All right. Thank you for your kind work. Thank you. And listeners, stay tuned for the next episode. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.